At the outset, I should thank Dr. Rao and the authorities for uh, asking me to speak today. Still, some people are sticking to the chairs, most probably to do the proximal muscle weakness, fatigue, and inability to get up from the chair. That is a sign of aging. Uh, at the outset, the topic that is given to me is the caring of the bones. In fact, I am not a proper person to talk about that topic because I only treat a broken bones. I am a carpenter. I fix bones and I f uh, fix joints for the arthritic. And if it, those, those are prevented, I lose my job. <laughs> and uh, the ideal person to talk this topic is an endocrinologist with who is interested in metabolic bone disease. But anyhow, I try to attempt to... Where is this slide changer? This one? Yeah. Can I have the first slide, please? So caring for your bones. No. To understand the structure of the bone, the peak bone mass, functioning of the joints, and also to understand the importance of diet in bone health, especially the calcium and vitamin D, uh, next slide, please. The, the, in the, the statistics shows 20% of the population are above 65 by 2025 because of the increased longevity, the normal versus pathological aging, normal aging versus aging with a disability problems. So the sarcopenia means decreased muscle mass, osteopenia and osteoporosis is decreased bone strength leading to fracture of course osteoarthritis just like an aging of the or fissuring of the articular cartilage giving into a degenerative bone disease bone is a living tissue from which substances are constantly being uh, removed and replaced so it's a dynamic one bone formation and bone resorption take place throughout the life although at different rates at different times Peak bone mass is usually reached before 20 to 35. Just like uh, if when somebody wants to plan a retirement, it should not be done after retirement. It should start at the age of 20 to 30. Similarly, if you want to have a good bones, you must start your exercise program and uh, the vitamin D and calcium supplementation right from at the 20 to 35 years, not at the age of 60. After this age, bone gradually decreases. This is a start. It's not, uh, achieving a good peak bone mass is important to, res to reduce the risk of osteoporosis at a later date. The bone strength is uh, uh, affected by genetic factors, gender, diet, calcium and vitamin D, physical activity, body weight. See, this, on the left side, you can see a bone which has got a minimal cavities. As the osteoporosis occurs, it be becomes hollow. The skeleton is composed of mineral content that is calcium hydroxyapatite 60 percent and organic material collagen about 40 percent. In osteoporosis, the bone is of normal size but contains less bone tissue with no change in the ratio of mineral co content to organic material. In osteomalacia, the amount of bone can be normal or increased but has a reduced mineral content. The risk factors in osteoporosis, non-modifiable age, Caucasian race has got more and female gender. Modifiable, suppose smoking, alcohol, estrogen deficiency, low calcium intake, low body weight, and lack of physical activity increases osteoporosis. This is a schematic diagram. In the osteoporosis uh, related fracture, important of uh, public health. 10 million Americans suffer from osteoporosis, 34 million are at risk. More than 2 million fractures in the USA in 2005 were attributed to osteoporosis. Of course, this is a graphic representation of the age and the incidence of a vertebral fracture, colitis fracture, and hip fracture. This is a, and the vertebral fractures at the the about 1.5 million, and hospitalization is about uh, 5 million, and trips to the emergency room 8 million. Similarly, it increases people uh, placed in the nursing homes. This is the burden of osteoporosis in advanced uh, country because we don't have much statistics in our country. We need to uh, depend on the USA. The incidence of fracture per year exceeds that of the stroke, myocardial infarction, and breast cancer all put together. One in three of the vertebral fractures and one in six of the hip fractures. I, because the Sarasli Cooper said a beautiful sentence, the fracture 
many people say they uh, I fell down in bathroom and sustained a fracture but that is not true the fall is the result of fracture the fracture is not the result of fall a minimal twist produces a fracture he loses his balance and falls in the bathroom and he comes to us and says I fell down in bathroom and sustained a hip fracture here you can see I break I broke my wrist by opening my medicine bottle so a simple turning in the bed Simple wild coughing or sneezing also can produce vertebral fractures in osteoporosis. See, once the vertebral fracture or hip fracture occurs, they become dependent on some form of uh, either a crutch or a wheelchair or about a, some, uh, something else. So how to measure this osteoporosis? The, uh, this is the DEXA is a universally accepted. But some of these smaller machines like ultrasound machines where they can put the foot or hand or thumb, they are all useless. They give an erratic reading and we cannot depend on that. So the most important use is a DEXA. Of course, the both T-score and Z-score are equally effective. As up to minus 1 to 2.5, it is osteopenia. My, um, more than minus 2.5 is osteoporosis. And min more than 2.5 is called fragility fracture or severe osteoporosis. <coughs> the National Osteoporosis Foundation recommends BMD testing for the following individuals. All women aged 65, regardless of the risk factor, younger postmenopausal women with one or more risk factor, and postmenopausal women who present with fractures, um, uh, estrogen deficient women at clinical risk. So all these people, though um, people who are having risk factors, should have a DEXA at the age of 50, but all those people otherwise can have a DEXA after 65. The management, of course, lifestyle modification, the now the pharmacological, exercise, orthosis, assisted devices, ambulatory rate, dietary and nutrition. So the treatment options are the calcium, and on average, when there is a deficiency, we need to do take 1,200 milligrams per day. The anti-resorptive, now the anti-resorptive agent, that's called bisphosphonates, we have got weekly, monthly, and yearly infusions, especially uh, zoolandric acid, can be given once in a year, people who are osteoporotic. Then calcitonin is useful in vertebral fractures for prevention of pain. Of course, we need to have anabolic agents, that is synthetic parathormone. hormone. This is highly expensive, teriparatide. Of course, now off late, the rate of the cost is uh, coming down. Once upon a time, it is about 30,000 per month, and it is to be taken daily for two to three years. It's so very expensive and it has to be taken very uh, every day. Now the rates have fallen down up to 10,000 per month. The sunshine, and the, this is called sunshine vitamin. Vitamin D, we thought one, up to last three years, the test is not available in India. From the last three years only we are doing this test. This test is very expensive and on average test is costing anywhere between 2,500 rupees. Whereas the treatment doesn't cost more than two to 300 rupees. See, and the second thing is vitamin D, the natural resources of vitamin D is very, very low. Though the milk contains vitamin D, you have to take 5 liters for a daily dose, which is not possible. So the vitamin D, the main vitamin D is only a sunlight. It gets um, this in, by irradiation in the skin and 25 hydroxylation in the liver and 1 to 5 dihydroxy uh, calcification occurs in the kidney. Many people thought, many uh, pharmaceutical people supply 1 to 5 dihydroxy cholecalciferol telling that it is an activated form. But in general, activated form should be taken only with renal disease. People who doesn't have a renal disease, we should only take 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol, that is vitamin D. The, in, in India, the sunlight is abundant, but none of us are exposed to sunlight. Our car is AC, our office is AC, our auditorium is AC, and our bedroom is AC. And that is one of the reasons why when we tested all our doctors in our hospital, all are below normal. Then, then, then we started uh, taking vitamin D regularly. We, that is number one. N second important point is, many people say, I al always go for morning walk and I am exposed to sunlight in the morning. But each country, the sunlight exposure differs from country to country because the sunlight should touch the skin in a particular angle that is known as genith angle. In India, it is between 10 and 2. So even if you are exposed in the morning or in the evening, you do not synthesize uh, vitamin D. So um, this metabolism is involved in... Second thing is, 
if you read about the vitamin D, vitamin D is very important for uh, for uh, immune mechanism. So the incidence of diabetes, type 2 diabetes mellitus is very high. The incidence of ororectal cancer is very high. The incidence of hypertension and myocardial failure is very high. So in, in when you read about vitamin D, it looks not only about the bones and osteoporosis, vitamin D is equal to life. In fact, the incidence of tuberculosis is very high in vitamin D deficiency people. So, the, of course, uh, once the, the clinical muscle weakness, proximal muscle weakness, chronic muscle weakness, myopathy and increased fall. Recent studies suggest that vitamin D supplementation of 7800 units significantly re um, reduces the incidence of falls. The risk of osteoporosis may be reduced with adequate intake of vitamin D and calcium. The vitamin D, suppose somebody, the normal level of vitamin D is 30 to 80 nanograms per millimole. Anybody who is less than 30, between 20 and 30, we call it as a insufficiency. Anything less than 20, we call it as a deficiency. Deficiency has to be treated aggressively uh, with uh, 6 lakhs units of arachidol vitamin D. Next week onwards, 60,000 units of vitamin D weekly once for about 4 to 6 weeks, then a maintenance dose of 2,000. Nevertheless, we should not exceed vitamin D 100 nanograms per millimole because the toxicity is also described, sometimes they will go into renal failure. The low intake of vitamin D uh, is, uh, of course, so many cancers and uh, the vitamin D also produces lack of vitamin D dementia. So uh, in a 70-year-old man, we gave vitamin D and he started calling his wife, darling, sweetie, uh, beauty. Then we asked, uh, we thought the vitamin D is working, but this patient said, I forgot her name 10 years ago, I'm afraid to ask her name. This is not due to vitamin D. So, um, vitamin D deficiency causes increase in parathyroid hormone, which increases the insulin resistance, that's why leading to diabetes. The vitamin D deficiency is in early pregnancy can cause preeclampsia. So, in the result, the, ro the role in all causes, the mortality is very high if you are vitamin D deficiency. Of course, as, we, as I told you earlier, the vitamin D is found very less in the diet. That is one of, this is recognized in USA and every food substances. The bread is fortified with vitamin D, ice cream is fortified, the orange juice is fortified, the buttermilk and milk in India, those because of the high availability of the sunlight, they are thinking vitamin D is not uh, necessary to fortify in the milk and other things. So, a balance is required between avoiding the skin damage and the exposure to UV light. So, the disorders, disorders uh, associated with abnormal gut function also causes vitamin D deficiency. And pancreatic insufficiency also produces, or a biliary obstruction also produces vitamin D deficiency. So, so vitamin D, this was already covered, mild, moderate, severe, and uh, of course, oral capsules and... Uh, injections. Second thing is for the caring of the bones is an osteoarthritis. Though, though we think just like graying of the hair, osteoarthritis cannot be cured uh, totally, cannot be prevented totally because by and large the Indians also many of them 10% of the population, more than 10%, they, they are born with a little bit of bow legs. So the medial joint orthosis is very common and um, nowadays the, and also the obesity especially the obesity and also the fractures which are occurring into the joint, they all produce arthritis and uh, arthritis, subchondral sclerosis, marginal osteophytosis and severe pain and leading to joint replacement. This is an x-ray where typically the middle side joint space is narrowed and here also same middle side uh, narrowing and osteophytosis and, um, uh, and in the hip also. So the ultimate is the, is the most important thing is strengthening the muscles around the knee and this anti-inflammatory drugs but by and large we are not supposed to use painkillers except painkillers like crocin tramadol we should avoid the other painkillers like uh, diclofenac sodium ibuprofen all these things will slowly damage your kidney because when we prescribe some diclofenac sodium to a patient, the patient comes after five years, doctor, I'm happy for the last five years I'm taking diclofenac, I'm not having pain. But when you measure the serum creatine, it will be more than two. So this is a disaster. Because in India, you prescribe a tablet, if they are happy, they continue to take. 
they continue to take, that's like give them an inch, they take a mile. Control of, so the goals of treatment in arthritis is control of pain and swelling, minimize the disability, improve the quality of life and education. So the, the most important is weight loss and a shorter period of rest for to control the pain and prolonged rest can also lead to muscle atrophy. So that is not helpful. So in, uh, when it is severely painful, only we can give some rest and spintage, but followed by a good physiotherapy. Uh, of course, exercises like China, it is yoga, swimming, and other things. Uh, so the intraarticular injections, by and large, we should avoid giving uh, steroid injections. But hyaluronic acid, if the joint is not permanently damaged, there is uh, some role of hyaluronic acid, a normal constitution of uh, cyanide fluid, which can be injected under aseptic conditions. Of course, the surgical management, it all depends on at what stage the patient comes. It may be a minimal, some loose bodies and a, a minimal shaving of the articular cartilage can be done by arthroscopy. Some a deformity can be corrected by an osteotomy or if the medial joint space is narrowed in a knee joint, we can always do a partial joint replacement and if the entire joint is, is damaged, there is no other go to do a total joint replacement. So this is a picture of a partial knee replacement. See, this is a post-operative x-ray. This is called a total knee replacement. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dr. Prashad. You started by saying that you're not the right person to talk about <laughs> it, but you've done a very good job of it. Uh, we'll take one question, but please keep it as a question related to the presentation and don't make it a consultation for your own bone health. <laughs> I think you are correct. Ah. So I think uh, we should go for our uh, Indian uh, statistics also from the hospital. I think there, yeah, yeah, there is no doubt. Uh, nowadays, many number of articles have come on the osteoporosis in India, especially from Delhi. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, we'll take one more since you've already stood up. But that's the last question, please. So what's the incidence of in India? Oh, the, the, the problem is the, the test has come for the last three years only. In my outpatient, irrespective of whether the patient has got whether a symptom or not, we are going ahead with the endomastral checkup and other things. Almost 70% of them are vitamin D deficient. It's surprising. Thank you, Dr. Prasad. Thank you, Dr. Prasad. Let's give him a big round of applause. May I request Dr. Arora to honor Dr. Prasad for his presentation, please? Over to you, ma'am. <laughs>